Until now, we haven't had much to say about the 1, 2, R elementary step, which involves the shift of a bond, a pair of bonding electrons, from one carbon to a carbon next door, where the carbon next door bears only six electrons. Because it requires a six electron building block, the 1, 2, R step is characteristic of carbocations. In addition to shifting a bond one carbon over, this step shifts positive charge in the opposite direction, causing a potentially significant change in stability of the positive charge as it moves, for example, from a secondary to a tertiary position. The fact that this step is completely intramolecular, occurring within a single molecule, and that it can potentially be accompanied by large swings in stability due to a shift in the position of a positive charge, means that it's very important to consider the possibility of 1-2 rearrangements in mechanisms involving carbocations. In this video, we're going to deepen our understanding of unimolecular substitution, or SN1, by integrating 1-2 rearrangements into our understanding of the possibilities for the carbocation intermediate of these reactions. The 1-2 rearrangement elementary step in a carbocation context involves the migration of a hydrogen or an alkyl group from one carbon to the carbon next door using a pair of electrons in the carbon-hydrogen or carbon-carbon bond here. In the resulting product, the migrating group has moved one carbon over from carbon 1 to carbon 2. This is why this is called 1-2 rearrangement. And it's also important to notice that the carbocation, the positive charge, has shifted as well from carbon 2 back to carbon 1. When this step is thermodynamically favored, that is when we go from a less stable to a more stable carbocation, it occurs extremely rapidly because it's fully intramolecular. This is going to be a much more rapid elementary step than any sort of intermolecular process, such as the association of a nucleophile to the carbocation. So we need to look out for carbocation rearrangements in reactions for which these intermediates are relevant. The most obvious example is SN1, but we'll see carbocations show up in mechanisms later in the course, and we'll need to consider carbocation rearrangements there as well. Since we need to make this call about whether a particular 1-2-R step under consideration is thermodynamically favorable or not, it helps to revisit the stability factors for carbocations, and there, there are two that are relevant to this determination. The one we'll focus on first is inductive effects associated with the number of alkyl groups connected to the cationic carbon cations bearing more alkyl groups are more stable to the inductively donating nature of the alkyl groups. Consider the reaction shown here. At first glance, we would expect this reaction to occur through an SN1 type mechanism in which the bromine atom is replaced with the nucleophile, here OET. The fact that the electrophile is secondary and that heat is applied and that a weak nucleophile is used all suggest that the SN1 mechanism is operating here. However, this is not the product that's observed under these reaction conditions. Instead, the observed product indicates that the reaction still amounts to a substitution overall. Bromine is replaced with the OET group. However, the carbon to which the OET group is linked in the product is not the carbon from which the bromide departed in the starting material. What's going on here? Well, we already noted that these reaction conditions point to an SN1 type mechanism. This means that a carbocationic intermediate is involved that comes from departure of bromine with a pair of electrons to form bromide. The carbocation that results is secondary. However, a tertiary carbon bearing three bonds to carbon and one hydrogen is sitting next door to the secondary carbocation. This means that one, two rearrangement, migration of this carbon-hydrogen bond from this carbon I'm labeling one to the carbon next door, carbon two, leads to a product in which the cation is now tertiary. Because this rearrangement has converted a secondary carbocation into a tertiary carbocation, the product is more stable than the starting material, and the product side is the favored side, heavily favored side, in fact, of this elementary step. From here, coordination of the ethanol nucleophile to the carbocation and proton transfer leads eventually to the neutral product. And the key point here is that a critical evaluation of the cation with respect to the possibility of a stabilizing 1-2-R step was essential in predicting the major product of this reaction. Intervention of a 1-2-R step is somewhat common for secondary carbocations, as they very often have more substituted carbons linked to them that would be more stable bearing positive charge. Resonance delocalization is also an important stabilizing factor for carbocations, and a 1-2 rearrangement that moves a carbocation adjacent to a good electron source from a position where it wasn't adjacent to a good electron source is going to be a heavily favored rearrangement that we need to watch out for. Take, for example, the reaction shown here. 
Once again, naively, we would assume that the major product of this process, which again looks like an SN1 reaction because of the secondary electrophile, weak nucleophile, and heat, is going to involve substitution of bromine for OET. However, once again, this is not the major product, and in fact, it's not observed at all. In fact, the major product of this reaction does come from an overall substitution of bromine for the OET group. However, here again, the carbon to which the OET group is connected in the product is not the carbon from which bromide departed in the starting material. A short atom mapping exercise reveals that these two carbons have a 1-2 relationship, suggesting the intervention of a 1-2 rearrangement step in this mechanism. The carbocation intermediate that forms after departure of bromide here is a secondary carbocation, and it looks at first glance like it's attached to carbons that wouldn't be more stable with a positive charge. This is a primary carbon, and the carbon next door is also secondary. However, migration of a carbon-hydrogen bond at the carbon on the left shifts the positive charge into a position where it's adjacent to a good electron source, the carbon-carbon pi bond. We can draw an additional resonance structure of this molecule through pi to A type electron flow that shows the stabilizing delocalization of charge in this carbocation. And so this 1-2 rearrangement step has led to the production of a more stable carbocation, meaning that the product side of this rearrangement is the favored side. Coordination of the nucleophile to this carbon, followed by proton transfer, then leads to the observed final product. The overarching lesson of this video is that anytime you encounter a carbocation within a reaction mechanism, it's important to consider rearrangements. More specifically, the 1-2-R step. Make sure to evaluate whether any potential 1-2-Rs within the cationic intermediate could lead to considerably more stable intermediates, bearing more alkyl groups at the positively charged carbon or possessing additional resonance structures. As you practice with mechanisms involving carbocations more and more, you'll start to recognize structural patterns that point to the importance of 1-2-R within a particular context.